and Mayor Heres, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lancastrian Suite. On behalf of the RNF All Ranks Club, I hope you had an enjoyable evening. Uh, fire exits, uh, four corners of the room if we we'll have to leave the building. Um, unfortunately, I've uh, had a very, very busy week and uh, I'm not really up to it today. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, if my spiel gets lost off, I do apologise. Um, tonight, uh, we will be covering slightly a little bit about the song as we move into a minute of silence. I would like you all to be upstanding when you hear the sounds of whistles. I'm trying to create the effect that you would be part of the going over the top when the whistles are blowing. As their men did on the 1st of July, 1916. So when you hear the whistles, please stand up and we'll have our last words for a minute of silence. There's two gentlemen here this evening who are a great grandson and a great great grandson of one of the gentlemen of the Tyneside Irish who was killed on the first day of the song. And that is a James Mac MacFarlane and his son. If you would like to stand up, James, please. Two Jesus. Two Jesus. Thank you. The reason, the reason I asked them to stand up is so you know where they are. And the fact is, your dinner card, when you read it, on the doors, which open out, and which tells you about the Tyneside Scottish and Tyneside Irish, their great and great great grandfather's name is on there, and it's telling you the peers of the Thief Farm Memorial that his name is etched on. This query is about how many people died during the first year of the song, and it varies from 57,000 going over the top to 67, sorry, to 60,000 going over the top. I'll just put it as a round figure, and this 60,000 went over the top, and out of them, at least 20,000 were killed. But the rest were all wounded. So it just gives you some statistics even though they might be quite right, it gives you an idea how many people on the one day of the sun, how many was killed and wounded. Tyneside Scottish and Tyneside Irish really got a bad deal. It was one of their first big campaigns. And I know this historian is probably sitting in the audience today and saying, he's got that wrong, he's got this wrong. I don't intend to have it right. I wasn't there, it's a hundred years ago anniversary. So what we're going to think of is, it's the story of what they went through. And I'm only trying to sow the seed. In that card, hopefully, you will see a little bit of interest to remember the history of their men. Right, I would like to try and I'll bring on the corner card, the paper, and then we'll listen to some bombardment, which is very little, and some of the other effects that took place on that day. So I invite our paper to start the evening. Thank you.
As I said on the first day of the song, they had been bombarded for seven days, day and night. That's the German lines. There was one and a half million shells fired. And I would just like you to listen to just a, a brief sound of the bombardments. This is only one field artillery gun. You can imagine something like. 1,400 guns firing over a period of seven days. They were hoping to actually destroy the German trenches, but unfortunately, they'd been living there two years and they put them into concrete bunkers. So it didn't make any effect whatsoever. Around about 28 minutes past seven, the Lock McGaw crater went that was two big bombs, and what they are doing was they tunneled underneath and tried to kill off the enemy. But fortunately, it didn't work, and that's why the Tyson soldiers, Tyson were cut to bits. And not only them, but other ones. They had two minute signs at the 728, and the first time the, the, the Skylarks were heard for seven days. You can imagine their lines from thinking of going over the top. They only had two minutes from 728 to going over the top. And they went over the top to the sound of a whistle.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please be seated.